people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Indian economy has reached an unprecedented spot. Delhi is no more just an observer who would take its calls on the basis of what major markets around the world dictated. It is gradually becoming an authority. Amidst a looming slowdown and sharply rising inflation, India has emerged as a beacon of hope. Today we show you how India is actually reaping the dividends of its decisive fiscal calls and structural reforms it pushed over the years. The world's leading economies are yet to get over the fiscal challenges caused by the COVID pandemic and its aftermath. The World Bank has also predicted a global recession in 2023, which has further increased global anxieties. Among the very few countries who have successfully countered the post-pandemic crunch, India was one of the earliest to invest in its infrastructure, digital economy, and other economic reforms. India's early mover advantage puts it in a better position to emerge from the pandemic in a stronger position. Be it prioritizing macroeconomic stability by putting in place a framework to combat inflation, GST reforms, creating a common market, opening of new sectors, privatization and building infrastructure, India has efficiently overcome the prevailing challenges with a strong political will. Inviting investment in the manufacturing sector has been an integral part of India's successful economic plan as it climbs up the ladder to reach its next goal of being the third largest economy in the world. Vedanta Limited recently joined hands with Taiwan-based multinational contract electronics manufacturer Foxconn to invest over 19 billion USD in India's Gujarat state. The two companies will set up a semiconductor fabrication unit, a display fabrication unit, and a semiconductor assembling and testing unit. The assembling of such precision technologies requires close cooperation with local governments, which the companies have successfully achieved after long discussions on logistics. The semiconductor plant will create 100,000 direct jobs and will also provide a multiplier effect on other industries that are linked to the production of semiconductors in the region. आज हमारी एजुकेशन कैसे बढ़े आज हमें नॉलेज हमारे बच्चों बच्चे हमारे कैसे आगे आए उनको ये लैपटॉप उनको ये सेलफोन आज हमारे गरीब लोग 15000 20000 रुपए का नहीं खरीद सकते इसकी दो ही रॉ मटेरियल होते हैं एक ग्लास और एक सेमीकंडक्टर उसके अलावा बाकी चीजें हमारी जो स्टार्टअप हैं हमारे जो फैक्ट्री वाले हैं वो उसको बना सकते हैं तो इसके चारों तरफ जो क्लस्टर बनेगा मैं उसका सपना देख रहा हूं Recently India overtook the United Kingdom as the fifth largest economy in the world Experts suggest that by 2030 India with its strong domestic market will become the world's third largest economy a result of its timely actions to handle the global economic crisis India's domestic market is also attractive and then there is portfolio inflows which uh, while they by definition are volatile we have seen reasonable inflows happening in recent months uh, even in that so i think overall uh, india remains a very attractive um, destination for uh, direct investment the world's leading companies are looking towards the indian market for investment opportunities India's Commerce and Industry Minister, Piyush Goyal, during his recent visit to the United States, interacted with eminent business persons, U.S. officials, and industry leaders to fortify the partnership between the two nations and strengthen trade and economic ties. The top CEOs of American companies have expressed their confidence in India's growth story. India is going to be the fastest growing GDP in the world for the next decade and probably for two. It's well within reach of the $5 trillion. And the only question is how fast does India get there? And India has the trust and partnerships at a time that's very important where, candidly, China is losing that trust and that partnership. So on everything from startups to 
uh, joint investments in manufacturing to semiconductors. This offers an opportunity for India to lead, and I think that India can and will lead. Minister Piyush Goyal invited foreign investors and entrepreneurs to be a part of India's journey towards becoming a developed nation. He calls it a golden time to invest in India. Are open to engage with like-minded uh, countries helps make India probably the world's best destination today. India has a young working population, which will be a key driver of economic growth in the country over the long term. The Capital Economics, while quoting United Nations data in its research paper, said that India's working age population will increase by around 150 million between 2022 and 2050. The burgeoning domestic market, especially in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities, will help India in its march up the global rankings. Moving on. Nepal, a sandwiched country between two Asian giants with two different ideologies, finds itself at a crossroads in rapidly shifting multipolar global order. And while its neighbor China has been trying to expand both its political and strategic footprints in the country, Washington's financial support to the Himalayan nation is being seen as potential event that could mark the beginning of another geopolitical standoff between the two countries. Will the country succumb to the dragon's dead trap diplomacy or will Nepal embrace a vibrant democratic ethos and build its own future on its own terms? We take a closer look. Nepal walks a tightrope as competitive diplomatic maneuvers between China and the United States intensify in its small but strategically significant location. The tug of war between the two major economic and military powers aimed at augmenting influence in the Himalayan nation intensified as a large Chinese delegation visited Kathmandu recently. The joint statement released post-extensive talks suggested that meetings were largely focused on the Nepal general election, scheduled to be held later in the year. In what has been highlighted by many as undermining Nepal's sovereignty, Beijing has managed to persuade Kathmandu to sign an agreement which will allow China to keep a close and constant vigil over Nepal's legislative and governing standpoints. Experts say China is also concerned about the declining dominance of the communist parties in the country. In order to achieve its long-term objectives and advance its expansionist ambitions, Beijing wants to see a government in power in Kathmandu that is in line with its ideological leanings. China appears concerned that Nepal's uh, Communist uh, parties uh, may lose elections and, and may lose their you know, standing uh, in the power dynamics uh, and may lose their position uh, in the parliament, uh, where they were the largest party uh, in the, during the last elections. So I think it's quite worried about uh, November elections. On the other hand, the United States has become increasingly involved in the Himalayan nation. The United States' 500 million USD assistance under the Millennium Challenge Compact, which was ratified by the Nepal Parliament recently, is a major setback to China's overly intrusive diplomacy. The grant assistance of 500 million USD would be used to strengthen Nepal's energy transmission and road development projects. This particular development has rung alarm bells in China's power corridors. Since then, China has shown a special interest in Nepalese issues. In the recent delegation-level bilateral engagement, China pledged to expeditiously pursue projects related to the BRI, or Belt and Road Initiative. Deemed as the modern-day Silk Road, these projects were signed as far back as 2017, but have yet to see the light of day. There was a kind of uh, you know, exchange of wars between China and uh, USA you know, when there was, uh, Nepal was debating whether or not to ratify NCC, or just recently whether or not to join uh, the US uh, State uh, Partnership Program, uh, SPP. And so the Chinese leaders are coming in and, and trying to know and, and trying to, uh, you know, uh, take Nepal and Nepali leaders into confidence more now than ever before. Experts have opined that China has devised a two-pronged strategy to counter a possible American diplomatic consolidation in Nepal. 
One, China will unleash information warfare tactics against Washington. Two, it will pursue Nepalese political developments in order to have who China considers to be favorable leaders at the helm of affairs in the country. The general elections in November will be crucial to the future course of diplomacy. However, the tide doesn't seem to be favoring Beijing. With its debt trap diplomacy receiving negative publicity and its missions in different countries facing a popular backlash, there is no denying that China is responsible for some major investments in Nepal and other similar small underdeveloped countries. However, the loans China provides are tagged with massive interest rates, which eventually result in countries falling into the never ending debt loop. Sri Lanka has suffered the consequences. Experts predict that Pakistan might meet a similar fate. In such circumstances, one can only hope that Kathmandu somehow preempts China's moves and turns to more reliable, open, and democratic alternatives like the United States and India. Moving on, India reiterated its position of peace, diplomacy, and dialogue to resolve all forms of conflicts around the world at the recently held Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO Summit held in Uzbekistan, Samarkand. The global media praised the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi for persuading Russian President Putin into conceding his willingness to stop the war. India's rising prominence owing to its growing diplomatic deft and economic stature is certainly pushing the world into believing that there is an alternate recourse of peace available to move forward in geopolitics. As global financial bodies and independent analysts predict tough economic times ahead, India, the world's fifth largest economy, is determined to prevent such a scenario. At the recently held Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO, Summit in Samarkand, India pushed for peace and dialogue to resolve differences between the member countries. India reiterated its position of dialogue and diplomacy on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has maintained that countries must disengage from all forms of acts that have the potential of disrupting the global supply chain, which would disrupt economies and the lives of individuals across the world. Today, the pandemic took a heavy toll on lives across the world, and the global economy too went into an unprecedented downward spiral. The global GDP fell by 3.4% in 2020, which is equivalent to a loss of around 2 trillion USD. Although it recovered from the economic shocks in the subsequent quarters, Individual countries, especially those at the lowest rung, have failed to restore pre-pandemic momentum even today. A large majority of countries have been unable to bounce back from the pandemic and its economic aftermath. Experts opine that there is no recourse other than countries working cohesively to bring the most affected countries back in the mainstream. Experts also say that rising conflicts of all nature, whether they are military, like Russia-Ukraine, political, like in the South China Sea, or a trade war, like the one between the U.S. and China, will push people world over towards economic hardships. The Russia-Ukraine conflict has hampered economic recovery and the global supply chain is facing challenges like never before. Some believe a protracted war has the potential to severely damage the global economy, worse than the pandemic. A divided world is only fueling the fire. The major impact which this war has had is on the prices of uh, energy resources, both oil and gas. And uh, generally it is uh, Western Europe which is feeling uh, the maximum pressure out of that. With so much uncertainty in the world, it is of paramount importance that the global community unites and combines their efforts to achieve common objectives. It is incumbent on global bodies and non-aligned countries to play a crucial role in bringing major players to the negotiation table. India has been able to gain the trust of countries world over, whether it be Russia, European countries, or the USA. No country has objected to India's neutral and pro-peace stance towards the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Headlines across the world applauded Prime Minister Modi for rebuking the conflict and for pushing for peace between the two nations. Although it remains to be seen how things change from here, Grand India's dialogue and diplomacy approach is at work and is clearly bringing results for the global good.
time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. USS Ronald Reagan and ships from its accompanying strike group docked at a naval base in southern port city of Busan this week for the first time in about four years set to join other military vessels in a show of force intended to send a message to North Korea. Its arrival marks the most significant deployment yet under a new push to have more US strategic assets operate in the area to deter North Korea. Strike Group Commander Rear Admiral Michael Donnelly told reporters about the ship that the visit had long been planned and was designed to build relations with South Korean allies and boost interoperability between the navies. Observers say Pyongyang also appears to be preparing to resume nuclear testing for the first time since 2017. North Korea has denounced previous US military deployments and joint drills as rehearsal for war and proof of hostile policies by Washington and Seoul. Massive protests were carried out in Iran against the death of a young woman in police custody, video obtained by Iraqi Kurdish TV channel Rudo showed. The footage showed smoke rising from a pile of discarded headscarves in the middle of a street in Sardash. In the city of Urmia, security forces could be seen on the streets and protesters running as sound of shots being fired rang out. Iran's powerful revolutionary guards called on the Islamic Republic's judiciary to prosecute those who spread false news and rumors about the woman whose death in police custody has triggered massive protests with reports of security forces coming under attack. Mahsa Amini, 22, died last week after being arrested in Tehran for wearing what was labeled unsuitable attire. She fell into a coma while in detention. The authorities have said they would launch an investigation into the cause of her death. The protests over Amini's death are the biggest in the Islamic Republic since 2019. Most have been concentrated in Iran's Kurdish populated northwest but have spread to capital and at least 50 city and towns nationwide with police using force to disperse protesters. Amini was from province of Kurdistan. Artificial intelligence is shaping humanity in nearly all spheres and industries. Japan's AI Inside is one of the most progressive artificial intelligence firms that provides artificial intelligence solutions to people and firms all over the world. The services provided by AI Inside include the DX suit, which enables digitizing information from paper documents and analog data to digital ones. え、当社 it's a document written in Thai language and scanning the document into data. In addition, it can be used as CSV that is comma separated value data. This video is AI program that analyzes the congestion of elevators in a factory. It is created by the factory staff using AI creation tool learning center. They don't have AI program skill. AI Inside was also selected as a part of Asia Digital Transformation Project. The project aims to put digital innovation into practice in society in order to help ASEAN countries solve socio-economic issues. AI Inside is becoming a major contributor towards a faster, more reliable and more convenient source of information and technology all over the world. This is a racing car designed and manufactured by a young university student who aims to become an engineer. 
The Formula SAA Japan 2022 is an opportunity for students to develop skills for object creation, monozukuri, which will contribute to the expansion of the industry. A total of 69 teams will enter the competition and participate in various events for five days. え、あとその車を作るにどれぐらいの価格が必要だったかっていうコストっていう性的な審査とあと今今日やっているえ、走行のテストの2種目で大きく争っています。Japanese car and parts manufacturers are sponsoring the event and team to help train young car engineers. The Kyoto Institute of Technology team is known to be a strong team and has 56 members. The team is adjusting the racing car for the endurance race on the last day of the competition. The endurance and efficiency races will run 20 laps of the course. After driving for 10 laps, the driver changes and competes for driving time and fuel consumption cost. Kyoto Institute of Technology won the overall score and became the champion of 69 teams. Young engineers backed up by automotive giants and first-hand industry experience will become a major participant and contributor to the automotive industry on a global level. Fans of pop culture recently gathered for the cosplay fest Otaku Jatra or Anime Festival in Nepal's capital Kathmandu. They showed off costumes of their favorite unique characters, the products of hours of loving work and enjoyed their shared passion. Have a look. Dressed in their favorite comic costumes, these youngsters rejoice to be a part of the annual cosplay festival also called Otaku Jatra. Launched almost a decade ago, the festival brings together pop culture elements such as anime and comics. Cosplay, which originated in Japan, is a combination of the words costume and play. It is an activity and performance art where participants wear costumes and fashion accessories to represent mostly fictional characters seen in anime. Pop culture fans dressed up as their favorite animated characters during the one-day fest. The enthusiastic mob was seen clicking pictures with their favorite cosplayers while getting their faces painted with popular characters. Most of the youngsters, especially the millennials and the Gen Z generation reaching adulthood in the second decade of the 21st century, are fond of the animated characters. I've been watching anime since I was in grade 8 and now I am in bachelor second year. I have been watching anime since like a kid name on it, but it's it's fun to watch and time pass fun here, but it has become like a habit of watching anime. It just brings joy in my life. It is believed that the tradition of cosplay came out of the practice of fan costuming at science fiction conventions in New York in the early 20th century. The Japanese version of the animation, anime is generally perceived as a cartoon which has multiple genres of romance, sci-fi, horror and many others. In contrast to the regular cartoons that have been playing on the channels, anime focus on real-life issues or human emotions. The connecting stories from one episode to the other, like in the series, the stories of anime progress while the cartoons are made with an intention to make people laugh. The first anime ever released on TV Astro Boy was released in Japan around 1963. The anime is very popular in, among youngsters because like they have different kind of you know, you know behavior and they like to imagine so many things and uh, anime has made them to like have their imagination go far like uh, when they are alone they can have fun while watching animes and uh, some of them might have uh, some kind of engineer, that, like they are might, they might be introvert like you know it might be hard for them to make friends so maybe through anime they can make friends you know talk about anime the cosplay festival otaku jatra started in 2010 and has been growing over the years bringing together pop culture elements such as anime and comics 
There has been a growing popularity of cosplay festivals in recent years. While celebration of traditional festivals is a more recurring sight in Nepal, a slow infusion of global events is making the cultural space of the country even more vibrant. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.